In this video, we will do the calculations for both parametric correlation in the first worksheet to derive the Pearson's correlation coefficient, and for non parametric correlation in the second worksheet, calculating Spearman's row and Kendall's tau. The data shows the results of two assay methods, B1 and B2, for calculating the same percentage cell deaths or mortality at different concentrations of a drug. And we wish to compare the results of the two assay methods, B1 and B2. We give the concentrations of the drug both directly and as the logarithm of the concentration. To start with the Pearson's parametric correlation between B1 and B2, we first of all calculate the slope of the best fit straight line of plotting the values of B2 as Y against the value of B1 as X. And to do this, we will use the slope function where we highlight the Y values and also the X values, giving the slope directly. The next element in the calculation is the standard deviation of the variation in both data sets. So we take the sample standard deviation for the x values, which is b1, and the sample standard deviation for the y values in b2. The correlation coefficient is given as the fraction of the variation in y values that is predicted by the variation in x values. For perfect correlation, the variations in y will be predicted exactly by the variations in x. So to get the actual correlation coefficient, we then calculate the variation in y predicted by x which will be given by the variation in x values, but then multiplied by the slope to get the equivalent variation in y calculated from x. And then we divide by the actual variation in y, the standard deviation in y. And that gives us the correlation coefficient. We could also calculate the correlation coefficient directly in Excel using the Corel function, uh, in which case we highlight the two data sets. And it doesn't matter the order in which we highlight these in this case, because the correlation coefficient is a symmetric function and does not have that one variation is dependent on the other variation. So just entering the Corel calculation, we see we get the same value as our calculated correlation coefficient. We might now like to perform the hypothesis test to test whether this value of R could have occurred by chance. And the null hypothesis for this correlation hypothesis test is that the best fit straight line for these two data values actually has a zero slope. And to calculate the p-value for the two-tailed test, we must take the t-distribution, two-tailed, and the value we are testing is calculated by taking the value of r and then multiplying by the square root of n minus 2 in this case, where n is the number of data pairs in the correlation, which is 6. And this would be then minus 2 and then divided by 1 minus the correlation coefficient, but squared, which is up arrow 2. And then we must enter the degrees of freedom, which is again given by n minus 2, 6 minus 2, which is actually 4. And then we can enter the calculation which gives a p-value of 0 0.003, which is the result of the correlation test for a linear relationship between B1 and B2, and is highly significant. So we reject the null hypothesis and accept that there is a linear relationship between the assay methods B1 and B2.
And now for the non-parametric correlations, we need to take the ranked values of the data within each data set. And so for assay method B2, and we need to correct this first, the ranking is trivial because the data values just increase step by step through the data set. So the ranking is quite simply 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We could also do the ranking by I for B1, but we could also introduce the use of the ranking function, which would be equal to the rank AVG, which is the number, which in this case starting from C2, over the range of values. And because we're going to copy this down, we will put a dollar sign in front of the relevant rows. And then we must identify whether we want ascending or descending values. So we want ascending values, which would be a 1. And we can then enter. So it starts with a 1 and copying the formula down. It will rank B1 in the order 1, 2, 5, 3, 4, 6. We will perform the non-parametric correlation coefficients on the next worksheet and we will copy these ranked values through to that worksheet. So control C for copy. But we'll transpose the data from the vertical columns to horizontal rows and for that we will use paste special and we will want to paste the values but also transpose the data from vertical to horizontal. So now we have the ranked values for the two assay methods B1 and B2. Starting with the Spearman's correlation coefficient, the procedure is just to take first of all the difference in ranks between each data pair, which for the first column will just be B2 then minus B3. We can copy this across. We now need to take the square of the difference, which will then be just equal this value squared, which is up arrow 2, through here. We need the sum of all the differences squared, so this is just equal to sum of this row, 6. We need to identify the number of data pairs we have, which in this case is 6. And then we can calculate Pearson's row, or as it is sometimes written, Rs, by using the formula where Rs is equal to 1 minus and then 6 times the sum of rank differences squared and this is then divided by n the number of data pairs and multiplied by n squared minus 1 giving the Spearman's correlation coefficient of 0 0.829. For the non-parametric Kendall's tau we must now consider the possible concordance or discordance between equivalent pairs of data in the two samples. So for example if we take the pairs of data between I1 and I2 in B1 going from 1 to 2 the rank for B1 increases and the rank for B2 also increases, going from 1 to 2 in both cases. So going from 1 to 2 here, the data is concordant, so we will enter a C. Similarly, going from 1 in both data sets to any other data value, it increases in both assay methods. So all of these values, all of these pairs, are concordant. Similarly, if we start from i equals 2, in both data sets, if we go from 2 to any other value, the, the rank increases. So again, starting from 2, 
that pairs of data are concordant in both samples and so again we have C, C. We see the difference if we start from I equals 3 and going from 3 to 4 assay method B1 decreases from 5 to 3 but method B2 increases from 3 to 4. So the change is in a different direction so we identify them as being discordant. And then 3 to 5 in B1 it goes from 5 to 4 which is a decrease but in B2 it goes from 3 to 5 which is an increase. So the pairs 3 and 5 are again discordant. But 5 to 6 and 3 to 6 both increase, so they're both concordant. And if we look now, we see that all the other possible pairings are now concordant. And so in this calculation, we just add up the number of concordant and discordant pairs. And we find that we have 13 Cs, or 13 concordant pairs, and two discordant pairs. So the calculation for the value of tau is then given by the difference between these numbers, the concordant pairs minus the discordant pairs, and then divided by 0 0.5 times the number of data pairs, and then times the number of data pairs again, minus 1 giving in this case a value for the Kendall's Tower correlation coefficient of 0 0.733.